In the previous lecture, we discussed a concept known as mutual inductance, which is essentially a concept that deals with electromagnetic induction. So now let's look at one particular application. Let's suppose we have the following example. A long solenoid of length L and area A contains a wire with N1 number of loops. A second coil of wire is wrapped around the solenoid as shown in the following diagram. Now the second coil of wire contains N2 number of loops. So if an alternating current is allowed to pass through coil number 1 in part A, find the equation for mutual inductance M and part B. If we know N1, N2, A and L, we want to calculate the mutual inductance. So, let's begin with part A. And let's begin by looking at the following diagram and let's make sure we know exactly what is taking place. So we are given that an electric current, a changing electric current, is traveling through the coils of our solenoid. That is wire number one. Now as our changing electric current is traveling, it's creating a magnetic field. And because the current is changing, the magnetic field will also be a changing magnetic field. Now, because our magnetic field is changing inside the solenoid, it will create a changing magnetic flux. Now, because we are assuming the coils of wire of our solenoid are closely packed, that basically means the changing magnetic flux produced by the solenoid will equal to the changing magnetic flux that travels through the wires of coil number two. So we essentially want to determine the equation for the mutual inductance. So let's begin with step one. Recall that the magnetic field that is produced inside a solenoid as a result of an electric current I1 that is traveling through the solenoid is given by the following equation. So we derive this equation in our lecture on solenoids. So we saw that the magnetic field at the center of the solenoid is equal to the product of the permeability of free space, the number of loops in that solenoid given by N1, the electric current I1 traveling through the wire of the solenoid divided by the length of our solenoid. Now let's move on to step two in part A. So now let's define what our magnetic flux is. So just a moment ago we said that the magnetic flux produced by our solenoid is equal to the magnetic flux that coil number two feels as a result of coil number one as a result of our solenoid. So these two quantities are equal. Now, by definition of magnetic flux, magnetic flux is equal to the dot product of our magnetic field vector B and our area vector A. Now we're assuming these two vectors are at an angle of zero with respect to one another. And that means because cosine of zero is one, this is simply equal to the product of the magnitude of B and A. Now in part one of step, or in step one of part A, we were able to show that the magnetic field produced by the solenoid is given by this equation. So we can replace this B with the following equation. That's exactly what we do. So we see that the magnetic flux, the changing magnetic flux that's traveling through coil number two is equal to the following equation. So mu naught multiplied by N1 times I1 times A divided by L. Now, Let's move on to step three. In the previous lecture, we were able to show that the mutual inductance of coil two as a result of coil one given by M is equal to the product of the number of loops on coil number two and two multiplied by the magnetic flux traveling through coil two given by this quantity divided by the electric current that produces that change in 
electromagnetic flux that passes through coil number one, the solenoid, and that's given by I1. Now, in step two of part A, we were able to obtain the following equation for our magnetic flux. So now, we essentially take the following and we replace this entire quantity with this equation. So we plug it in to here. And that's exactly what we get. Notice the I1 and I1 will appear on top and bottom, so we can cancel the I1s out. And we see that the equation for the mutual inductance of coil 2 as a result of the solenoid is given by the following equation. So, the permeability of free space multiplied by N1 times N2 times A, the cross-sectional area of the solenoid, divided by L, the length of that solenoid. Now, let's move on to part B. In part B, we essentially want to apply these values, use this equation to solve for the quantity of mutual inductance on coil 2 as a result of coil 1. So we use this equation. So mu naught, the permeability of free space, is 4 pi multiplied by 10 to negative 7 teslas multiplied by meters divided by amps. N1 is 1,000 loops, N2 is 200 loops, A is 0 0.01 meters squared, and L is 10 meters. So we multiply and divide, and we get about 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4, and the units of mutual inductance are given by H, and H stands for Henry.